You say that you're a Democrat, um, but you're getting a lot of support from a lot of leading voices on the right, like Steve Bannon, Tucker Carlson, Alex Jones, former President Donald Trump. Many Democrats fear that you're a spoiler in the race, that you will damage President Biden in the primary and grease the skids for former President Trump to return to the Oval Office. This week, former President Trump said about you, Kennedy is smart and he's a common sense guy. What kind of man do you think Donald Trump is? Well, you know, here's what I'm not going to do in this race. I'm not going to ta attack other people per personally. I don't think it's good for our country. And I think, you know, what I'm trying to do in this race is bring people together, is to try to bridge the divide between Americans. And guess what? The, you know, when my dad died and we took this train ride from, you know, this seven and a half hour train ride that was supposed to be two hours, and I brought his, I was with him when he died in Los Angeles, and then we brought his body from, uh, from New York, Penn Station to Union Station and Washington, D.C. And there were, there were, it was a two and a half hour ride, but it took seven and a half hours because there were two and a half million people on that train track. And, and it was the cross section of America and all of the major urban stations in Trenton, Newark, uh, uh, Wilmington and Baltimore, there were black Americans singing Battle Hymn of the Republic. There were whites on the, in the rural areas who, love, who were holding up signs, goodbye Bobby, pray for us Bobby, American flag standing, saluting. Four years later, and they had supported my father in the primaries in 1968. Four years later, in 1972, they were not supporting my father, and they were not support. They were not supporting George McGovern, who was aligned with my father on all these issues. Instead, the vast majority of them were supporting George Wallace. And you know, there, my father was able to harness these populist energies. In the last day of his life, he won the most rural state in this country, South Dakota, and the most urban. He was able to bridge the divide among people who would otherwise be Republican, but wanted somebody who was common sense, who was able to appeal to their idealism, who was able to find the hero in each of them, who was able to get them to transcend narrow self-interest and see themselves as part of a community and part of this, you know, incredible American adventure uh, in, in modeling self-governance for the rest of the world. And so I'm proud that President Trump likes me, even though I don't agree with him on most of his issues, I'm, because I don't want to alienate people. I want to bring people together. I'm proud that all these people like me and that I have independent supporters and Democratic supporters and that I'm able to bring a lot of people. You know, every Democrat says, I want to end the polarization. But how do you do that without talking to people who don't agree with you? How do you do that without appealing to people? Without the per My purpose is to find the issues, the values that we have in common, rather than, you know, focus on the issues and the personalities but that keep us all apart. As a lifelong Democrat, as you just said very passionately, will you pledge to support whoever the Dem Democratic nominee is, wh whoever it is, whether it's you, whether it's President Biden? Oh, I, of course I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. No, of course I'm not. I'm not I, so listen. if you don't get the nomination, you won't support President Biden? I don't know what I'll do. Let's see how the Democrats, let's see what happens in this campaign. Let's see, you know, what, if, if people are living up to Democratic values and having debates and having discussions and, you know, talking to each other, but I'm not going to buy. And if you feel that's not happening, would you then support a, a Republican uh, gonna, or run I, as an independent? Not, you know what, my plan is to win this election and I don't have a plan B. Okay. Uh, we are we are in Chicago, which will be the home, the host to the Democratic National Convention next summer. Um, it is also where President Biden came today to unveil his economic blueprint. He's calling it Bidenomics. The economy is a huge issue with voters from of all stripes across the country. And that leads to our next question from George, a home builder and con contractor in the Chicago area. Hi, George. Hello. Everywhere I look, prices are sky high, from gasoline to groceries to building materials. Inflation and the uncertainty which it brings with it is damaging our economy. What is your plan to reduce inflation? Yeah, thank you, George. My, I, you know, I have a long-term plan and a short-term plan, but you know, I, it, 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 the current plan, which is to um, to raise 
interest rates dramatically and to um, and to uh, and to to end the quantitative easing I think is really doing tremendous damage I was in Cleveland yesterday meeting with um, uh, African American business people in, the, in a community called the Lee Harvard community and one after the other they were getting up and telling me one of them was a woman who had operated who had uh, operated for three four generations 80 years a sausage company that was very very successful she just had to, and, and it was bringing lots of prosperity to her community and lots of jobs she just had to close it down because she couldn't get a bank loan she couldn't get a bank loan because the interest rates are high and the little banks the ones that will loan to small businesses um their uh their treasury bills have now been degraded in value and they're scared about their targets for takeover their stocks have dropped 80 percent because of the heightened interest rates and they're not loaning money anymore and there's no money available to people who are um who need it and so you know what we've done we've sandbagged americans you're right and why do we have inflation we have inflation because of the continuous wars Wait, wait, what specifically would you do to lower inflation? Well, number one, I, I'm going to I'm going to wind down the American empire and start. We've spent eight trillion dollars on the Iraq war and the wars that followed. And we spent 16 trillion dollars on the pandemic, on the lockdown. The lockdown cost us 16 trillion dollars and we got nothing for it. We got nothing for the Iraq war. We got we end up killing more Iraqis than Saddam Hussein. But we created ISIS. I'm talking ISIS. about what people are in the grocery stores tonight. What, what are you going to do to bring down the prices in, in, of the food and the gasoline that they're paying for, you know, in the immediate future? Well, uh, the only way that we can do that is by reducing inflation. And, re and inflation is not going to be reduced overnight. What we need to do is stop spending money on things that we can't afford. We're, you know, we're borrowing now a, a billion dollars a day from the Chinese and the Japanese in order to fund the debt. The debt this year is going to cost us $660 billion, more than half a trillion dollars, just the service on the debt. We're not going to end that problem overnight, but we've got to recognize that we've got to stop, you know, we're, 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 we've got to stop. We're sending $113 billion to the, to the Ukraine. The, the entire budget of CDC is 12 billion. The budget of EPA is 12 billion. 57% of Americans could not put their hands on $1,000 if they have an emergency in their family. 25% of Americans are hungry. Oh, I have a friend who was on food stamps. He's a commercial fisherman. He's worked his entire life, to the, worked to the bone, created a business, gave it to his son-in-law. And he is, he was injured, he's on permanent disability. He was getting food stamps, $283 a month. And those food stamps are now worth a lot less because the inflation from paying for the wars uh, caused 76% rise in dairy, milk and eggs over the past two years. On March 1st, he got a, a robocall from the government saying that his food stamps are being cut by 90%. So he was getting 283 a month which you can't feed yourself on $9 a day. He's now getting $23 a month, trying to feed himself on 80 cents a day. That same month, 30 million Americans got that call that month in March. Another 15 million had their Medicare cut. That same month, we spent, we printed $300 billion to bail out the Silicon Valley Bank, and we topped off Ukraine at 113 billion. Oh, we don't have, we have money, plenty of money for the big shots who need their bank bailouts and for any war that comes along. But if you took that 113 million, that billion that we've given to the Ukraine and spent it here, we wouldn't have to, sp to cut $1 from food stamps for that 30 million Americans. And we're acting like an alcoholic who's, you know, behind on his mortgage and he's taking the milk money and buying rounds for strangers at the bar and thinking he's making permanent friends. And all of these money that we're spending on the military is not making us safer, and it's not making us friends abroad. The China, we spent eight, $8 trillion on, on, the, on these wars in Iraq during that same, and you know, Yemen and Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, and Libya, and Syria. 